this is my trunk area where I keep all the important things like the Chatamo adapter. But I've got a new addition to that that we're gonna go try out today. This is the new CCS1 adapter for the Tesla. And I just recently had all the stuff done for my car to make it compatible with this because it wasn't originally compatible. But first things first, we have to drive the car and drain the battery so that we can go test the charger. So I planned this trip out so that I would arrive back at the CCS charger at 10%. And um, now that I'm on my way to the CCS charger, I know where it's at. So I'm going to tell the car to navigate to a supercharger. I've already done that actually. So it's navigating to a supercharger. And eventually along the route here, it will start preconditioning the battery for supercharging which should make our CCS charging a little quicker than just plugging it in and letting it go. So with any luck, we'll get our peak as soon as we get there because we're navigating to a supercharger instead of a CCS charger. So navigating to the supercharger did not work because um, I was at such a low state of charge that it just wouldn't charge. So we are here, or not charge, it wouldn't preheat. Uh, but we are here now. So let's grab the CCS adapter and give it a try. And it looks like it's going to charge. So we'll see what it'll ramp up to here. So it looks like 165. Now that may go up over time because it's going to start warming the battery now. We've already gained a percent. Oh, 170. Can we hit 200? That is the question. We'll continue this in the car. So the car does show 175. 30 minutes remaining. And it doesn't say that it's supercharging, obviously, because it's not a supercharger. Actually, no. <laughs> Started to say, it's a supercharger. No, that's where I last supercharged. So 176. I'll keep an eye on this. If it goes up or down anymore, I'll let you know. Now, just for fun, let's do a little bit of comparing here. We'll turn off these slower chargers. So the lo local supercharger, 250 kilowatt, which is faster than what we're getting, by the way. But uh, 250 kilowatt, oh, no, I just wanted to look at it. All right, well, let's just do it this way. It's over here. And it's charging 43 cent a kilowatt hour right now. And then obviously there are idle fees. Now, there, there are other ones in this city. So let's see, there's another one down here, I think. Why is it not showing? There's probably a way to do this. Oh, there it is. It's th uh, 36 cent a kilowatt. Nope, kilowatt hour. <laughs> um, we're at 70, 178, by the way. Um, which is not bad, 36. And there should be another one down here. It's charging 36 as well. So with the Electrify America, membership i'm actually only paying 31 cent a kilowatt hour 179 kilowatt um, i'm only paying 31 cent a kilowatt hour right now uh, but there are other memberships um actually uh ev go has a membership now you do have to pay monthly for these memberships but if you charge a lot it kind of makes up for it uh so for example electrify america I'm now getting 180 kilowatt <laughs> electrify america um costs four dollars a month so if you can save four dollars by doing that then it's kind of worth it but if you don't charge enough for it to really make sense then it's not really worth it uh, but evgo does have a plan i think it's seven dollars a month and it lowers the cost down to 27 cent a kilowatt hour now that's cheap <laughs> um the only reason that i opted for electrify america in this case is because um, this is a 350 kilowatt charger and um, we wanted to see just how much we could get. All the other ones are either 150 or 50. Uh, most of EVGO around here are um, 50. So that wouldn't be worth 
the test. Um, my, my goal was to see if we could get above at least a V2 supercharger. And, um, you know, I didn't expect to hit V3 supercharger speeds, but um, this is definitely above a V2. And, um, and the fact that I'm getting it cheaper I mean, the nearest one's 43 cent a kilowatt hour, which I have used that one several times and never really caught that my card was being charged so much because I didn't look at the price. I was just like, oh, let's go plug in. Who cares, you know? Uh, no, this is definitely cheaper and just as fast, in my opinion. I mean, you know, we're peaking almost 200 here. I mean, 183, and... It's getting the job done at 31 cent a kilowatt hour. So I'll do a, an end screen just to show you what we ended up with. But uh, let's take a look here and watch for if it goes up or down more. I mean, 184. Now you're probably asking yourself, well, how do I get one of these? <laughs> um, it's not that easy. Uh, I had to import this one from Korea, South Korea, not North Korea. <laughs> And um, the whole process is kind of a, you know, it's it's not great. You have to give them your Tesla account login, which is very sketch in my opinion. And I was very hesitant to do it. I actually waited a week before I, I went through with it just because I was like, I don't know about that. But um, really wanted to get the content out, you know, and show you guys about these. So I ended up getting one uh, imported direct from Korea, 185 kilowatt now. And... Um, they're not cheap. So um, when Tesla sells them, they're supposed to be $250. Uh, right now, you can get them for around $600 on eBay. And that's about the best place I can think to get one. Uh-oh. We just stopped charging. Let's go see why it stopped charging. So I'm going to assume it was just a heat issue because it automatically started back and went to 3 kilowatt. So... We'll wait and see what happens. We did gain 30%. Technically, I could get home with plenty to spare at this point, but uh, just wanted to see what happened. So this is where we're at. Um, it is still putting energy into the car, but only at four kilowatt. And I mean, I get 11 at home, so that's not fast at all. Um, checking here, the adapter is not warm at all. Nothing is warm. This is a little warm. The cord is warm. So, I mean, it's a charger thing. I mean, yeah, there's, this is really warm, actually. There's going to be heat when you move that kind of power, but these are 350 kilowatt chargers. They should be set up to do that. So, I um, think I'm going to go ahead and stop it and try, maybe to try a different one. Uh, there is another cord here, but it's kind of on the wrong side. So, um, but four, oh, there it goes. Sorry, I was not paying attention. We're back up to 183. So, um, okay, I'll just leave it. I guess it's charging for eight minutes. I didn't even know there's a touch screen. <laughs> uh, so it's only been charging for eight minutes. We started at 7%, 33% currently. And I hear a fan kicking on, which I'm going to assume is the Tesla. 184. Yes, it is the Tesla. And there's heat coming from this wheel, which is normal when supercharging. That's how it cools the battery. So let's jump back in and see where we're at. How do you like my <laughs> illuminated door seals? So we're at 174 now. So it's going to start throttling because we're getting into about 35%. Well, we are 35%. Uh, so we're probably not going to see much of 180 anymore. It's starting to throttle down because of the state of charge. But uh, nonetheless, it still works. And as long as we're above 150, well, I mean, above 150, we're better than a V2 supercharger. But as long as the price is cheaper than a V2 supercharger, it's worth it. Now, it's to my understanding that with uh, Electrify America, at least it varies by state. So as long as I'm in North Carolina, I'm always going to get 31 cent a kilowatt hour because I have the membership. Each state is different. And in Florida, it's 43 cent a kilowatt hour. So it actually is cheaper to supercharge in Florida than it is to use Electrify America. I say this because I'm going to Florida next month. And 
just trying to look at all the options. You know, I'm, I'm all about saving a dollar, even if it's a few cent here and there. I mean, when you're talking about, you know, this car has an 80 kilowatt hour battery pack, somewhere right in that range. I think it's like 82 or 84 or something like that. But, um, you know, when you refill that a couple of times, if you're getting just a few cent discount each time, it's worth it. So now that we're at about 50% almost here, we're down to 110, 120, kind of bouncing in that area. It was at 110, now it's going back up a little, but um, I think this is a good stopping point for me. Um, I don't really need the charge. I can go home and plug in at this point. So just kind of wanted to see at what point did this start falling off? Well, it's about the same thing as a supercharger, to be perfectly honest. Um, maybe even a little better at this point, but uh, I mean, that's to be determined. We'll have to compare that head to head but um yeah that's where we're at and uh i'm gonna go stop the charging now and go home so definitely gonna be glad to carry this ccs adapter with me whenever i go from now on because i can definitely find a use for it